All right, hello everyone. Eric Marks here again with FindingMiddleEarth.com. And today we're just gonna do a quick unboxing of some new gear that I got in from B&H. So big thanks to B&H Photo for sending this my way to review. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know, I'm very upfront about these kinds of things. I don't get paid for reviews. Uh, I'm not sponsored or anything. I don't get any money for this whatsoever. Uh, what happens is I have a partnership with B&H Photo where they send me a certain allowance of gear every month that I'm allowed to get, and I get to review it for all of you guys. And I always do a poll right here on my YouTube channel, so subscribe so you can see that, and I let you guys choose the camera. So uh, this month I did a big poll. I, I asked if you guys wanted me to review the Fuji X-T3, the Nikon Z6, Nikon Z7, and I think I asked for the, one of the new Panasonic cameras that just came out. Um, and you guys all chose, like I think it was like 88% of the poll pointed towards the uh, camera that's in here. So I'll show you guys that. Uh, anyway, so all this means is that um, any I have a, a, like a general B&H photo link in the description, and I would so, so appreciate if you would use that if you do purchase any camera gear. If you use that, it basically just tells b &H Photo that I'm sending them, helping to send them some business, and they give me like a tiny, tiny commission for sending them the business, and they keep, more importantly, they keep sending me gear. Uh, so that way they can see, hey, being a partner with Eric from Finding Middle Earth is worth it for us, so we can keep sending him gear and helping him out. And this isn't free gear. I get to keep it for 30 days, and I have to send it back. So all you're doing by using the link in the description is just so helping support the channel. Uh, just to give you an idea, if you buy a $2,000, $3,000 camera, I think I get like $13 or $14 for it. So it's, it, I'm not getting rich off of this. It just helps support the channel. Uh, okay, so here's the box. Let's get inside. All right, super safe cutting towards myself, I know. All right, we're inside the box. Let's see what we got here. I'm sure you guys can already guess, especially if you kept up with the poll, what uh, camera and the gear that I'm unboxing here. So let's get all this stuff out of the way. Don't need it. All right, I got quite a few things in here. So first thing, what do we got going on? Let me scoot this to the side. Yes, I do finally have my hands on the Fujifilm. X-T3, and I got the, uh, I had B&H send me the kit, so I got the X-T3 with the 18-55 to kit lens, beautiful set, I love the kit lens from Fujifilm, it's beautiful. Now I have one lens in here that I've never actually played with. This is the Fujifilm, the brand new 80mm macro, super excited to do some testing on this, um, just to test the image quality and sharpness of the lens, I've heard great things. It's an 80mm 2.8, and the coolest part is it has OIS. And we all know Fujifilm's OIS is incredible. So there's that. And the last thing I got from B&H is the Fujinon 16 millimeter 1.4 prime. So we'll just do a quick unboxing here on camera and uh, you know, why not? Unboxing videos are fun. All right, so now that we've got the box and all the bubble wrap and stuff out of the way, let's start with the X-T3 and the kit lens. So inside the X-T3, I get a caution, a uh, warning of caution here. And it's in Japanese. Oh, here we go. Uh, to focus the viewfinder, lift the diopter adjustment control. Rotate the adjuster viewfinder focus. Oh, okay. So I'm assuming that Fuji's had some trouble with people trying to uh, adjust the diopter on the viewfinder and they're breaking it or something. So they're just giving you a, a caution warning saying you have to pull it out first before you twist the knob. It's interesting. Here is the X-T3. Oh, yeah. It literally feels and looks just like the X-T2, as expected. There's the, the beautiful new sensor in there, the X-T3 sensor. What a beauty. X-Trans sensors, you all know there's, there's something special. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's standard stuff. It's just like the X-T2, from, to my knowledge. Um, and it's, you know, I, holding it in my hand now, I kind of miss the Fuji camera just a little bit. So I'm going to put it down before, you know, I buy it. All right. So there's the X-T3, scoot that over. Next we have, let's go for the macro lens. I've never even held this lens before. Let's go here. The uh, nice little Fuji, it's almost like a suede. I think it's like a little suede lens pouch. I love that they include those. So let's get in here. Boop, boop, boop. Gosh, it's like a puzzle getting in here. Okay. Oh gosh, this thing has some weight to it. I've never held one of these before and it's, got some serious weight. It's not a bad thing, it's just, uh, it's, I mean, it feels really solid. Wow, dang. I like this. So this has the, um, 
the same uh, nice, super nice, solid aperture ring like the 16 to 55 2.8 has. It's got that super beefy, nice, smooth, buttery smooth aperture ring. Love that. Uh, let's see, Fujinon a spherical lens, 80 millimeter, 2.8. Uh, weather seal, that's good. I forgot about that. And then of course you have your OIS and you have a, uh, a little, you have switches here that'll, let's see, I think it's the meters of focusing. So just like on like Nikon 70 or 200, where you can change it to full, you can change it to infinity. It's just depending on what kind of focus range you're gonna be in with the lens. So there's switches controlling that. And of course the OIS, which is awesome. So you can do handheld macro. Uh, there you go, there's the macro lens. Pretty cool stuff there. Let me get this out of the way. The 16 millimeter Fujifilm 1.4 Prime. So it's same thing. Suede little pouch that you get for it, some paperwork. This has got a different puzzle altogether. All right. Got a little view, the, uh, what do you call it? Lens hood in there. And then here's the 16 1.4. Now this lens is, is probably my favorite Fuji lens. It's just beautiful. So sharp, ridiculous bokeh for a wide angle lens. And it's light, I don't know, I love it. So yeah, there you go, 16 millimeter 1.4 Fuji lens, 80 millimeter macro, and of course, the Fujifilm X-T3. Now, if you wanna stick around, B&H did send me one more thing, which I'm gonna take a look at on camera because why not? Uh, I have enough tripods. I don't really need any more tripods, but um, I do have a B&H rep like that I get to talk to about gear and stuff. I get to ask questions and sometimes they'll recommend things. And he said, hey, you know, why don't you just take a look at this tripod? Just let me send it to you. Just take a look. I want to know your thoughts. Like it's, it's, uh, I think it's like a B&H partner company. So I'm going to take a look at it and I'll unbox it and open it on camera and you can see my first impressions. If you're done, you know, if you're done watching now that I've unboxed the Fuji stuff, that's cool. If you want to hang around, I'm going to cut now. I'm going to switch over to opening the tripod. So stay tuned. All right, so if you stuck around for the tripod unboxing, uh, this is the Oben, so it's O-B-E-N, and the model number is the CT2491. It's a four section carbon fiber tripod. So I love taking a look at new tripods, why not, right? Let's unbox it. By the way, all the, uh, the links for these products, all the Fuji gear, uh, my personal camera gear, all that stuff will be broken down in categories in the description. And again, using that link just really helps keep the lights on and support the channel. All that stuff, the tiny little commissions do add up at the end of every month and any, any kind of gear you need, even if it's a, a little lens cloth or something, every little bit helps. So I have a general B&H photo link in the description and all this stuff will be marked as well. So in advance, I really appreciate you uh, helping me out for that. All right, so first impressions on unboxing. Uh, I respect any tripod company that gives you a bag, that ships a bag with the tripod, that's awesome. So let's go ahead and undo this Velcro little handle here and take a look at the actual legs themselves. All right, whoa, super light. That's the first thing I notice, as carbon fiber should be. Let's take a look here. Now I'm not gonna give a full review of this, but I will review this along with the Fuji stuff at the end of the 30 days, because why not, right? Okay, so let's see, the Oben CT, what is it again? CT2491. So I'm assuming that means the 24 probably means the legs are a 24 millimeter diameter leg. Uh, they have a carbon fiber weave. The legs are the little quarter turns. Okay, not bad. Everything feels nice and fluid there. Uh, it did not ship with a head, but it is super tiny. So I like that a lot. This is probably gonna be one of those tripods that you know I'll take to Disney World or something. Super nice and tiny. I like that. I'm assuming this little twist here. Yep, so there's a center column. However, uh, I was reading a little bit about this before I got it in and the center column does come out. So you can take the center column off um, and just put a ball head on here. I'll probably put one of my Acrotec ball heads on here. Um, it seems, I mean, first impressions, it seems solid, you know, it's not, I mean, it's, it's not going to be, uh, anything better than my pro media gear tripods, which are my favorite, but it's a carbon fiber tripod that's solid. And I would, you know, I'd, I'd use it to go take photos. Why not? It's, it's nice. Uh, I have reviewed a couple of other carbon fiber tripods that I did not like at all. And this one actually does seem solid. Let's see. So, Ooh, look at that. So the legs do push out from the back. Aha. Uh -huh. So you do have nice fluid action with the legs, that's actually nice. And you can push it in at any point to lock it. Okay, that's nice, cool. So all the legs go all the way out. That way if you do end up taking the center column out, you know, you can get super close to the ground. Very nice. And it does have a little bubble level, which is nice as well. And 
I think it has spikes. Let me see. I hope it has spikes. Let me confirm for you here on camera. Let's see. Aha, so it looks like you screw the feet inward and it pumps out these little spikes on the feet here. And you can see I'll get kind of a close up on that. A little spike right there. So it's not a big spike. Um, and, I, and again, if, it, if I'm wrong about any of this, if, I, if this whole nub comes off and it's kind of a longer spike, I will update you on that. But it looks like it's just this tiny little nub, which isn't anything special, but it, you know, it's better than nothing. So there you go. It looks like they keep the little spike hidden in the feet. So you just screw it in and the spike pops out and you kind of loosen it to a different tightness and the spike goes back in. Um, okay, there you go. Clearly I'm not screwing the feet back in, uh, but I do want to see how quickly, I like to see how quickly I can kind of undo the feet. So if I just kind of crank them all. Okay, so not bad. Oh man, this thing looks like it gets pretty tall. I'll have to, uh, I'll put the height of this tripod in the bottom here. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. And then they all kind of tighten and you're good to go. Okay, cool. So there you go. There's the Oven CT, what is it again? 2491. All right, not bad. Just thought I'd throw that on here at the end because they sent it to me and uh, why not unbox it in front of you guys and give you some first impressions. If you're looking for a, a you know, tiny little tripod to strap on, this honestly isn't bad. I mean, I'm kind of curious. I might replace my main tripod with this for like a week and just kind of give you my thoughts and see see what I end up liking or hating about it. I don't know, we'll see. All right, there you go. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for the unboxing. As always, see you guys in the next one.